Here's an interesting stat before we talk about that specific topic. The Padres, in the middle of this series, Minnesota, they're playing 15 road games out of the next 21. Oh, this is really going to define are they a first place team or are they going to be chasing people? Mm -hmm. They get done with this twin series, they go to Dodger Stadium. Three more games there. And we know how the last time they saw Dodger Blue worked out. Just, I don't quite understand the methodology of scheduling, why you'd put anybody on the road for 15 of 21, much like I don't understand why you'd give somebody the advantage of playing 15 of 21 at home in any chunk of the schedule. Mm -hmm. As it relates to the Padres, we saw a flash of Juan Soto. I mean, that was an impressive Tuesday game. Mm -hmm. Four for four, on base five times. He looked really different at home plate. Bat to ball, the swing, the power. Now, I don't know if that's a one-game aberration or whether they've discovered a flaw in his stance in the box because at least in the four-for-four four night, and he's hit, he's hit a lot of balls on the nose in the last week or so, but in that night in Minnesota, he was on base five times. He wasn't moving in the batter's box. He wasn't dunking. He wasn't moving his head. He wasn't moving his arms. He was stationary waiting for the pitch. I don't know if that's a one-time aberration or whether they solved it. Manny Machado, three-run bomb in the Tuesday game, starting to hit a little bit better. I can't get away from the theory, though. He hit 152 for the better part of a month. Just absolutely mm. stunning. I look closely at him, John. He doesn't look right to me in the batter's box in terms of explosiveness of swings. He doesn't look right running the bases in terms of power. Now, he's, he's making a ton of great defensive plays, but that's just move left, move right, make a throw. I, I don't know that he's healthy, and that's a big issue to me. Tatis is Tatis. He's, he's hitting the ball on the nose. He's hitting home runs. He looks like he's kind of really back into form pretty quickly. And Xander Bogarts has positioned himself maybe to be an all-star candidate at shortstop. He's had a really good start. The rest of the batting order is ragtag. You never know what you're going to get. Bob Melvin continues to move people around the batting order, see if he can find hot guys who feel comfortable in certain slots. We'll just wait and see. So what did you see in Soto? Your theory on health or not with Manny and is El Nino El Nino? Well, I, they're coming around and I'm starting to feel optimistic as far as Soto goes. Um, you know, the exit velocity off the bat is up there. So, I mean, he's hitting it hard. So I think to your point, you know, he's, he's turning it around. I mean, maybe you should be the new Merv Retman of the Padres, get you in the dugout coaching these guys, but yeah, Soto looks different. I think he's kind of figuring it out. Now Machado is a different case. Machado can fool you visually, you know, because he's so kind of cool. He glides, he glides. And so when, if you really look at his swing, it's not a violent swing. It's always a smooth swing. And he just hits it just right, and the ball takes off. And he's always susceptible to those sliders down and away, and that'll fool him. But they they left some pitches up. He's starting to hammer those. When you look at another batter like Tatis, where he's a more aggressive swinger, and you can tell the difference. And then even last year when Machado was on the bases, he runs – but he's gliding when he runs, you know, and he's got the arms going. He doesn't seem like he's moving fast, but he can sneaky steal some bases. So I just think we have to understand Machado and appreciate him for what he is. Is he hurt? Well, yeah, he had a little bit of a back kink like a few weeks ago, but I don't know what his status is now. We'll see as May marches to June. I mean, if they're still scuffling June 1st to be a 500 team, I'm not going to like that. And by the way, nice headline. <laughs> they have to win with this roster. Their AAA roster at El Paso is 15 and 19. Their AAA roster at El Paso is made up of 16 street unemployed free agents. The, oh, wow. late, the latest is Jose Iglesias, former shortstop, Tigers, Angels, Reds, pretty good hitter over the course of his career, decent shortstop defensively, but on the other side of age 32. That's the makeup of the roster. And they have 17 street free agent pitchers on the El Paso roster. The only prospects at El Paso right now is the left-handed pitcher, Ryan Weathers, that they're stretching out to bring back. And whenever he gets healthy, if he can stay healthy going forward, because he's had six different arm injuries, Adrian Morion. That's it. They have street 
free agents in El Paso, none of them I would view as established, I can help you major league players. So this is an end result of the general manager trading away. Mm -hmm. You go look at the box scores of major league teams. There are ex Padres everywhere and a chunk of them are having good seasons. Now it's not to say they don't have good guys at Lake Elsinore because they got three or four good ones and not to say they might not have a good one or two uh, in, in the Midwest league, but there's not, nothing in the farm system at this point in time. It, it, to me, it's really stunning. So what they got at El Paso, go stay at El Paso all season because they can't play up here. Well, I think for the most part, those are what they call depth pieces, right? Um, there are the, street, the, the 4A guys, the street free agents. So, you know, most teams, their they're hot prospects are in the lower minors. That doesn't surprise me too much. I just think, you know, they've got, you know, in case there's injuries with the big league club, they can bring some guys up. But Weathers has been really good in El Paso. And they're saying that, you know, with this stretch of 15 out of 21 on the road, they might go back to the six-man rotation and bring him back up. I mean, he's definitely very deserving. I mean, I was shocked when they sent him down in the first place. Well, they wanted to stretch him out. Uh, and again, I was shocked how did he, how well he did when he first got here this season because I thought this was going to be a reclamation project uh, for Ryan Weathers. And it looks like all the things they've taught him have really, really worked well. So that's the summary on Padre Baseball. 15 roadies in 21 games. That's just, that is just hard to fathom. And being on the road is really tough. On we go. Okay.